I really, 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 really think that flute technique or finger technique, playing technique, is one of the most misunderstood concepts on the flute. The problem is, is that so many of us practice and practice and practice and never really seem to get all that much better. I find so often aspiring flute players will kind of look to technical exercises as this kind of magical cure that's going to fix their problems, but it's not. So how should we practice our technical exercises? Hi everybody, my name is Tatiana and this is The Flute Practice, a space to inspire, guide and support you on your flute learning journey. Since the beginning of the year, we have been doing kind of themes each month, looking at specific flute topics. And this month's theme is all about building technique. Over on Patreon, we are going to have a Patreon-only video where we're going to get into slightly more practical ways that we can build technique. And of course, for those of you who are in my technique classes, this is going to be a month of really kind of soldiering ahead with those amazing technical exercises we're working with. A really important point that I want you to kind of bear in mind in this whole video is this. It's not what you practice, it's how you practice it. We need to stop looking to technical exercises as our kind of savior that's going to fix all our technical problems. We need to start using them as a tool to diagnose and fix our own problems. The first thing I want you to understand is that your hand position and how you use these guys is going to make all the difference when it comes to your technique. A really simple example is if you straighten your fingers and make them super duper duper tight and try and wiggle them really quickly, yeah, it's probably not gonna happen. If you relax, ow, if you relax your hand and release your fingers into kind of natural curved shapes and now try and wiggle them and tap them, ha, huh, easy, free and working really well. It's a simple example, but it is quite literally that simple on the flute too. The more released and relaxed your hand positions are, the better they are going to move, the faster they are going to move, and the more even they are going to move. So what do I mean by free hand positions? I have done some other videos on this, so I'm not gonna get into huge detail here, but the basic kind of underlying concept behind it is thinking of the natural positions of the hands. I would say a kind of golden rule is Observe your flute hand position. Observe how you hold or carry the flute and how you move your fingers. If those positions or those movements are not movements that you would do in any other time in your day or in your life, you might want to re-evaluate those positions. Like, if you think about this, like would you ever hold your hand like this normally? Or like this normally? Or like this normally? If the answer is no, you seriously might want to reconsider your hand positions. Both my hands, I like to kind of think about almost like this hand is holding kind of a nice, beautiful, big, juicy orange. So a nice kind of big ball-like shape. And this hand, I like to imagine there's like a little hamster cuddled up in there, snuggling in there. So that my fingers are all kind of naturally curved, not in kind of tight blocks, but just naturally curved. My thumbs are straight, but not locked out and also not bent. So they're just kind of naturally straight as they would kind of naturally be if I was holding something. And from this position, I play. Guys, this is where it's really helpful to work with a teacher, to work with somebody who can give you guidance, who can give you feedback and can try and help you to find better hand positions. But I promise you that you are not going to get the technique that you want to get if you do not spend time working on your hands. And this is a process, this does not happen overnight and we use our technical exercises to constantly be checking in with our hands and our hand position and figuring out what we are doing with them. Fun, true little story time. When I was learning flute at the age of 18, I remember I was incredibly frustrated. I felt like I kind of kept hitting up against this wall of my technique that I just couldn't get past until I actually started working on my hand position and really started fixing it. I can tell you my teacher had been nagging me about this for years. Another teacher came along and was like, you need to fix your hand position. I was like, oh wow, okay, yeah, I should probably do that. I'm so sorry, Bridget. 
So hand position, guys, it's so, so, so important. The next thing next to hand position that you really wanna pay attention to when you're doing technical exercises is your finger movement, the quality of your finger movements. You want to make sure that your fingers are not moving too high off the keys so that they're not kind of like banging off the keys, but you also wanna make sure that they're not kind of too stiff or too close or too kind of stuck either. Again, you're looking for a natural free movement of the fingers. This is going to be the way they're going to move the fastest and the most evenly as well. You also want to kind of make sure that your fingers are only moving when they're supposed to be moving. So for example, especially in the high register, sometimes we kind of move the fingers and like a whole bunch of our other fingers are moving along, or at least we're not 100% clear on which fingers should be moving when. Guys, remember that speed on the flute is completely useless if you don't have even fingers to go along with it. I'm pretty sure I've done this demo before, but if I play... Okay, that was a terrible sound as well. I'm gonna get to that in a moment. <laughs> or if I play... I don't know that I can make my fingers tense without totally ruining my sound. Hmm, interesting. Which brings me to my next point, which is that all technical exercises should be tone exercises first. Don't sacrifice your tone while you're trying to fix your fingers. Always play with good sound. The reality is when we're playing with a good sound, we're breathing well, we're opening well, it's kind of the basis to having a kind of open free body as well. So if we've got a bad sound and it's tense and it's tight, I can almost guarantee that your shoulders, your throat, your tongue, your embouchure are tight, which translates into your fingers. So don't sacrifice your sound, it's not worth it. As you just heard right now, fun little fact, as you fix your hand positions, the sound actually does improve with many students, certainly does with me. Hand in hand with kind of hand position and with checking out the finger quality and the quality of your movement is to really listen. Now your ears are going to be your best friends when it comes to improving your technique and you want to listen like an absolute hawk to every tiny detail of your playing, making sure that your fingers are moving absolutely together and that there are no kind of like little extra sounds or three hour moments in between. So for example, E to F sharp is a famous one. Something like that. You really, really, really want to learn and develop the art of listening carefully. Again, if you're worrying more about how you're practicing and less about what you're practicing, you're going to learn that you want to really use your technical exercises to diagnose problems, so you're going to be listening out for them so carefully. One of my things that I tell my patrons and my students regularly is that we celebrate when we find problems. I'm not joking, we quite genuinely celebrate because we find a problem, it means we can fix it. We now know it's there. It's always been there, but now you know. This kind of practicing really requires your lights to be switched on. You really are completely focused on what you are doing. You're focused on the movements, on what your body and your hands are doing, and really listening carefully. If I had to kind of sum it up into one word, it's awareness. You are building intense awareness for every detail of your playing. I think in many ways we have been doing this upside down. We've been expecting technical exercises to fix our technique instead of using technical exercises to help us discover the problems in our technique and then we fix them. Awareness is really the key to all of this and I can promise you that you can practice anything and I mean anything, you could practice Mary had a little lamb, but if you were doing it with this level of awareness, it's going to be a game changer for you. I do just wanna add that this is a process, like you're not gonna just do this from one day to the next, and it's a process you learn to listen better, you learn to become more and more aware, and you kind of start to kind of grow into more released, relaxed, and more comfortable hand positions. It takes time, it takes patience, and it takes consistent work. But I believe in you guys and I think you guys can do it. Okay guys, this might be quite unexpected for some of you, but I'm going to challenge you guys to really try to practice like this. Try become more aware, try listen better, try work on your hand position, the quality of your finger movements, just working on how you are moving, 
how you are doing the exercises rather than what you are doing. I believe in the slogan so much that I am making a whole bunch of really beautiful, amazing merch with it on. A huge thank you to Karen. She is a member of our community who's designed this amazing design along with a few other really nice designs and some more coming up, which we are putting onto some really cool merchandise, including some awesome mugs, this really, really, really beautiful bag. And just in case for those dog lovers, a little doggy bandana that will remind you to practice. Seriously, I'm ordering some of the stuff and I can't wait for it to arrive. Until then, everybody, happy practicing and see you guys next time.